بودی من افراد Suggested I read a girl and go. Honestly, I'm going to read a girl and go anyway. But I think I will do red. Since it is one of the main inspirations for my literature. So, without further ado, read by a girl and go. Someone gently rapping, rapping at my chamber door. There's some visitor, I muttered, tapping at my chamber door. Only this and nothing more. Ah, uh, distinctly I remember it was in the bleak December, and each separate dying ember rotted the dust upon the floor. Yeah, I wish tomorrow, vainly I had sought to borrow. From the brook's decrease of sorrow, sorrow was for my lost Lenore. From the rare and radiant maiden, the angel of the name of the name was here forevermore. And in silken, sad, uncertain rustling, from each purple curtain throw me. Filled me with fantastic terrors never felt before. So that now, still the beating of my heart, I see the repeating. Tis some visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. Some late visitor entreating entrance at my chamber door. This it is, and nothing more. Presently, my soul grew stronger, hesitating them no longer. Sir, I said, or madam, truly your forgiveness I implore. But the fact is, I was napping, and so gently you came rapping. So faintly you came tapping, tapping at my chamber door. But I was scarce, was sure I heard you. Here I opened wide the door. Soon again I heard a tapping, somewhat louder than before. Surely, I said, surely that is something at my window lattice. Let me see, then, what threat is, and this mystery explore. <coughs> Let my heart be still a moment, and this mystery explore. The wind, nothing more. Opened here, I flung the shutter, when, with many a flirt and flutter, in there stepped the stately raven of the stately days of yore. Not the least of decency had made he, not a minute stopped or stayed he, but with a mind of lord or lady, perched above my chamber door, perched upon the bust of palace, just above my chamber door. 
perched and sat and nothing more. <laughs> this ebony bird beguiling my sad fancy into smiling. By the grace since turned decorum of the countenance it wore. Though thy crest is shorn and shaven thou, I said, art sure no craven, ghastly grim and ancient raven wandering from the Plutonian shore. Tell me what thy lordly name is on this ninth Plutonian shore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Much I marveled at this ungainly fowl to hear this constant this course so plainly, though it answered little meaning, little relevancy for For we cannot help agreeing that no living human being ever yet was blessed with seeing bird above his chamber door. Bird or beast upon the sculptured bust above his chamber door with such a name and nevermore. <coughs> But the raven sitting lonely on the placid bus spoke only that one word as if his soul and that one word he did outpour. Nothing farther than he uttered, not a feather than he fluttered, till I scarcely swore and muttered, other friends have flown before. On the morrow he will leave me, as my hopes have flown before. Then the bird said, nevermore. Startled at the stillness broken by reply so aptly spoken. Doubtless, said I, what it utters is its only stock and store. Cut from some unhappy master whom unmercifully disaster followed fast and followed faster till his songs one burden bore, till the dirges of his hope and that melancholy burden bore of never, never more. This I sat engaged in guessing, but no syllable expressing to the fowl whose fiery eyes now burned into my bosom's core. This and more I sat divining, with my head at ease reclining uh, on the cushion's velvet lining that the lamplight glowed over, but whose velvet violet lining with the lamp lit glowing over. She shall press, ah, uh, nevermore. <laughs> <clears throat> then, he thought, the air grew denser, perfumed from an unseen censer, thrown by seraphim whose footfalls peopled on that tufted floor. Wretch, I cried, thy God hath lent thee by the angels he hath sent thee, respite, respite, and left the tenth from thy memories of Lenore. Quaff, oh, quaff this kind repent. And forget the thoughts of Lenore. Quoth the raven. <coughs> Nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil. Prophet still, if bird or devil, whether tempest sent or whether tempest tossed thee here ashore. Desolate yet all undaunted, on this desert land enchanted, on this home of horror haunted, tell me truly, I am poor. Is there... Is there balm in Gilead? Tell me, tell me I implore. Quoth the raven, nevermore. Prophet, said I, thing of evil, prophet still, if bird or devil, by that heaven that bends above us, by that God we both adore, tell the soul with sorrow laden, if within the distant Aden, it shall clasp the saintly maiden whom the angels name Lenore. Clasp the rare and radiant maiden whom the angels name Lenore. <coughs> Quoth the raven, nevermore. Be that word our sign of parting, bird or fiend, a shriek, starting. Get thee back unto the tempest and thy night's plutonian shore. Leave me no black plume as a token of that lie thou hast spoken. Leave my loneliness unbroken. Quit the bust above my door. 
take thy beak from out my heart and take thy form from off my door. Quoth the raven, nevermore. And the raven, never flitting, still is sitting, still is sitting on the pallid bust of Pallas just above my chamber door. And his eyes have all the seeming of a demon that's been dreaming. And the lamplight over him streaming throws his shadow on the floor. And my soul from out that shadow lies floating on the floor. Shall be lifted. Nevermore. <laughs>